So what we got here <laughs> is my lovely assistant, Ava, who's driving me up a fucking wall. <laughs> so here's the deal, right? So when you get a stove and you buy a set of fireplace tools, you get a shovel, you get a pick, which is great for moving logs around, and then you get a, a log grabber, <laughs> which is good for a regular fireplace. Yeah. Not good for a stove. I've never used this in my stove. Mm -hmm. Normally, when you first go to clean your stove or get your stove to reload with logs, the shovel's your tool. Problem is, our stove dips down inside. So you have to turn the shovel backwards and try and work at it this way. Well, what I found is the shovel's made out of real thin material and really weak. And then if you try to go this way, you don't have enough angle to get into the bottom of the stove. Mm -hmm. Like right now, the stove's not crazy hot. Yeah. But the stove gets crazy hot where you can't even put your hands here. So what I came up with was, A, you can see the length difference mm -hmm. between the shovel and my stove tool. Okay, and then you can just take the stove tool and you stick it in, you brush off right at the front so nothing tries to fall out at you. And then you can go right down to the base and you can push all your embers to the back of the stove like this. And what I normally do is draw my embers straight back to the front of the stove. But you can see the shovel would not be as efficient and this is longer. And this is longer, so you're all, you could be all the way back here. You're not cooking your face, burning your makeup off or anything <laughs> yeah. like that. You know what I mean? So what I'll do is draw these coals forward and now just knock it off. And then you got this nice bed right here that you can lay your new wood on. Yeah. So it makes it really simple and really easy. I'll use the shovel. So this is where the air comes out with the draft. Okay. So when I put logs on top of this, I just make a little path to the back. Mm -hmm. Small little path, making sure that that air tube is clean. So when the log sits over top, they sit there and the air can rush to the back of the stove. So the stove burns mm -hmm. more efficiently. So how did you make this tool? So how did I make this tool? So after many a days being frustrated, trying to deal with the stupid shovel, I was like, there's got to be a better way to clean the stove. And I just got done doing some concrete work around the house. And the hoe that they use for a concrete is similar in design to to this so but a, a hoe has holes in it so for mixing concrete so like there'll be a hole here and a hole here or a hole there and they're usually taller so a hoe wouldn't necessarily work in this because we're only working with a small yeah. amount of space so i had the flat stock i had this and this is a piece of conduit and i just welded it up yeah. one day just kind of agitated and pissed off and tired of burning my knuckles even with the gloves on yeah okay pretty cool right yeah. You put a lot of thought into this fireplace. I did, yeah, because I don't accept the status quo. I just kind of change and say, oh, well, maybe we can do something better here. Mm -hmm. The one night I was literally, it was like two in the morning, I'm playing with the stove. Next thing you know, I'm downstairs welding and fabricating <laughs> till four in the morning. I'm, I come up, I'm like, ooh, look at this. You know what I mean? I got a freaking cool ass tool yeah. and it works. You know what I mean? So then I made them as Christmas gifts. Oh. So nice. I gave yeah. my camera guy, Dave, one for his Christmas mm -hmm. gift. And I gave my cousin, Ryan, who has the exact same type stove, as a mm -hmm. Christmas gift. And they absolutely, once they started using them, they loved them. Yeah. So That's pretty cool. a great cool. idea. I don't use standard fireplace gloves. These are actual welding gloves, mm -hmm. Tillman welding gloves. And the reason I use regular welding gloves is because the stitching is stronger on these gloves and mm -hmm. they're meant for abuse. So they're meant for actual work. For me, okay, I can grab the logs and put the logs in there no problem mm -hmm. with bare hands, but it does get hot to where it burns the hair off the back of your knuckles and the back of your hand. Well, with the gloves, like if you open this stove door, sometimes there's embers sitting right here, right? Mm -hmm. So, and you can't see them because see here, you're not going to see it. So you're yeah. going to open the door, let it, let it crack. And then you draw it open. Next thing you know, you got an ember laying right here. Well, your natural instinct with bare hands is grab it and quick throw it in there. Yeah. It's going to cook the fingers and burn the nice tender parts mm -hmm. of your fingertips. So this is helpful. Yes. The, well, this, this is a uh, wool rug. So mm. this doesn't burn and it stinks when it burns. So if yeah. I took one of those embers and put it on here, it has a real nasty hair, yeah. hair smell. But with these gloves on, you can get in here and you can play with the embers. Not long, but you can, go ahead, touch them. Pick it up, you can move them around. See that? Weird. Ain't that <laughs> crazy? Yeah. 
That's neat, right? Yeah. And you, when you pull your hand out, always look at your hand to make sure no embers are caught to them. Mm -hmm. So what can happen is if you pick, an, pick a, an ember up with your hands or you put your hands in the stove, an ember can get caught on your glove and you brush it off on your pants, burn a hole in your pants, get it on your carpet, <laughs> or carry it around the house somewhere yeah, and light the house on fire. Exactly. You don't want to light your house on fire by any means of the imagination. Yeah. Normally, when I work on the stove, I turn the boiler off. Yeah. Because if you open the door, and let's just say, sake of argument, something tries to roll out. Now you're contending with air blowing on the embers. It could blow it beyond you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, it could be bad. It could be really bad. So I generally turn the, the blower off when I open the stove. I'm working on the stove. It was late one night. I had the blower on, and I was just throwing some extra logs in the stove, right? Mm -hmm a log had fell right on the front of the firebox. Mm -hmm. And it's, if you open the door, it wants to roll out. Yeah. Okay. I'll use the shovel like this. I'll open the door and I'll crack it and I'll stick the shovel like this and I'll push the log back like that and gradually open the door. Yeah. Okay. So here I am working with the stove. I didn't turn the blower off. I did open the draft and all I was doing was putting two extra logs in for the night. Mm -hmm. God was with me, whoever was with me, somebody was with me this night. So I opened the stove up and a top log fell, hit the front, burst into a bunch of little embers. They all fell onto the floor. I'm scooping them up with, with my gloved hands yeah. and I'm throwing them back in the firebox because it was like just burning. Yeah. What I didn't realize is when one fell out, it rolled and landed right there. Oh, that spot right there. So here's the scary part, right? So that, that ember was this big. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, it's pitch black. I couldn't see him sitting here. This was sitting like this. The paint was bubbling on this from this ember sitting on the hardwood floor. I left the room after I had the fire going. I left the room because I didn't need to sit here. I left the room and I just had a bad feeling. Double check the house. I was in the house by myself. I walked down my steps, I came into the room, and all I saw was that glowing red ember sitting right there. If I would have went to sleep, I would have lit the house yeah. on fire. And you see how far it made it from the firebox. Yeah. And I didn't see it because I was too busy going like this, trying to get all the other pieces into the stove. So you got to be careful. Always double check. Double and triple check. check. There's no going back once the house is yeah. on fire. <laughs> all right, Ava, it's your turn. Give it a shot. Okay. You can draw the stove open a little bit. There you go. And you see how the embers get all different? Yeah. That means the air is rushing in. So I just push everything back. Yep. And then just do the whole stove that way. Not bad for your first time dealing yeah. with the stove. But you can feel that heat, right? It's just yeah, it's up. hot. So then just go back and then gently draw forward. You want to go a little deeper but go further back to the stove, all the way to the back of the stove. Bend down, look up. See how you're missing? Oh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. It's hard to see back there. Yep. Well, considering this is your first time doing it. Just and get then, all yep. of them to the front. Yep, all the embers, you want it more to the front. Yep. And you leave that ash. See how you're leaving the ash behind? Yeah. That's what you want. And you don't necessarily want to pack them down, the embers. You want air to get in into the embers. Okay. Okay. It's like you can go scrape. Them. You can scrape the back with the with the tool. You know what I mean? Like go go all the way back. There you go. There you go. Like that. Perfect. See? Some see that? There. there you go. It's hot. It is hot. But see, I think that's like you can slow. come back further on the tool. Yeah. If you so choose you don't to. Burn yourself. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. Nice. So then okay. you want to just ding ding the tool. So this way, any embers that are stuck to the front of the tool are going to come off. Yeah. Okay. That's and then good. you can put the tool over there that ends hot so be careful so now what you would do is like if you want those embers to burn down so you can get more logs in you would bring the door closed keep the damper open and just kind of get you can close the door but don't latch it just let it let it go to there and let the embers sit like that now you see how they turn bright orange yeah that means the air is rushing in mm -hmm. and those embers will burn down rather quickly okay okay so now that your embers are burned down, now what you're going to do is get ready to load some wood in the fireplace. So the best way to do that, now that your door's cracked, your draft is open, just open your door, and then you're going to grab the shovel. So just kind of hold the shovel sideways, and you don't want to go deep. You just want to go right and go left. 
So what you're trying to do when you do that is let air to the back of the stove. And what that does is it lets the air roll around inside the stove. When you're putting fresh logs in, you want as much oxygen to hit as much surface area of the embers and as much of the log to get mm -hmm. the logs lit. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna put that on the hook, make sure you got no embers on your shovel. Now, we're just gonna get the fire going right now. Okay. So how we're, we're not gonna fill the firebox, mm -hmm. okay? So if you just take this log and place this log roughly about in that location right there, and then we're gonna put another log in front of it. Yep, you gotta go a little angled. Yep, like perfect, that. yep, there you go. You see how the glove protected you? Yeah. So now you're gonna grab another one. So now you're gonna take that and you're gonna place that on top of this one but not all the way to the front. So go ahead. So, yep. And then just let it rest. Bingo. You can draw it a little bit closer to the front of the stove. So like this, just like this, right like that. Okay. Now, if you grab that log right there, this one? it's like a, it's like a jigsaw. Yep. That one. It's like a jigsaw puzzle type of deal. Yeah. Okay. So now what I would do is, See how the, it's tapers back? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can either put the log in like this, like that, or you can put the log in like that. I, since it burns more and better in the front, I would put this log in this way. Yeah. And then just place it directly on top of okay. that. Okay, just be careful of the ceiling of the stove. Yep, place it just like that. Bingo. Okay, then you're gonna close the door not close it and latch it just let it let it sit like that now watch what happens we have the draft open we got air rushing in see the smoke starting yeah. to build and you're going to watch down at the bottom of the firebox there it goes see it just lit up over yeah. there in the corner oh shit, it's on fire it's on fire right it's cool right yeah that tells you how hot those embers are yeah i see it in the back see, see the back all that. so that's that's why we cut that little path mm -hmm. in the back so this way that air travels from there straight to the back and of the then, firebox yeah and lights up. Now, the key is to dry wood, dry seasoned wood. So this yeah. wood sits underneath of a tarp, for, that's for keeping our wood dry, mm -hmm. okay? So dry seasoned wood, and usually hardwoods, this is ash and maple, you want this to sit one full uh, season. Okay. Okay, so summer through winter, and then it'll be ready for next mm -hmm. year, split. Key word, split. Yeah. Because it lets all the moisture mm -hmm. out of the wood. So now you let this burn like this for a little bit, and I generally, I don't know about other people, I generally don't walk away with the door open. Mm -hmm. Two reasons. A, if the door happens to swing open, generally not gonna happen. But if a log decides to fall, come and hit the front of the stove, it's gonna hit this, knock the door open, and potentially could roll the, the log out here on fire. Bad problem, yeah. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so I generally sit here, if you noticed, when I load the fireplace, I always sit right here yeah. and wait for the fire to get cooking. Mm -hmm. Once the fire is cooking, like we're ripping pretty good. Look at that fire up in the top. Yeah, it's now, a lot. You, now, if you look up in the top of the stove, you see how it looks like there's like, like burners mm -hmm. burning? That's the secondary air part of this stove. This is what's classified as a non-catalytic stove. So that's called secondary air. And how that works is, the heat of the firebox draws in cool air, mm -hmm. and then that reburns the smoke coming off of the logs. So now if you take and close the door and latch the door, watch what happens to the fire. Yup, and you always wanna make sure that's all the way down, and it is. Yeah. Now watch the fire, look at the fire, just get really, really intense yeah. up top. Because now it's relying on the air from the draft, and it's relying on air from your secondary burn mm -hmm. tubes. See. How it works inside your firebox, it's hot down the bottom, mm -hmm. but hot air rises. So that's a, that's a fake ceiling inside there. That fake ceiling gets it hot right mm -hmm. up top. Yeah. So that piece of wood that's all the way up the top is getting hotter than the piece down the bottom. Even though the one down the bottom is burning, that one up top is in the heat. That's why they tell you when you're in a house fire, go to the floor. Yeah. So like my fireman customers tell me in an eight foot ceiling, it could be 1500 degrees at the top of the ceiling, but down on the floor is 200. Mm -hmm. So that's why they tell you to get down on the, on the ground yeah. because the heat is all trapped in the ceiling. Same works inside yeah. the firebox. So we have all that burning up in the top. So now you probably could get away with cutting that to half at this point. And then you're gonna monitor the fire. And once that's going real good and the wood's nice and dry, you close that damper down, forget it, and just let it let yeah. it cook. 
everything go. And then usually, after I close it down, I just keep an eye on it for a little bit. Okay. Double check, I don't have no embers out on the bottom of the hearth or out anywhere, and then yeah. I let the stove go. But right now, now you can see how it's starting to really draft from up top. Mm -hmm. Through the secondary burn tubes. Yeah. That's cool, like, right? Yeah, I like watching it. It's mesmerizing. Mm -hmm. And you can actually hear the fire in there. Yeah. Like, yeah, like watching shit burn. Yo. That's the inner pyro in me too. Yeah. Trust me, that's the inner pyro, girl. <laughs> <laughs>